there's something that takes you back. Like I, every day I think about that moment. Every night I think about that moment. And strangely I'm back swimming and doing all that stuff. But I do remember being on the beach, looking up at the sun and thinking this is a gorgeous day to die. Paddled out, it was just a normal everyday surf. Paddled across to a wave off by myself. I like surfing by myself. Took off on a wave and as I turned into the wave, crashed over the top of me and the board came down and hit me on the back of the head. So at that stage it knocked me, knocked me out. And so I lost consciousness, but when I came to, which was very lucky, I started to get uh, a severe pain in my chest. And from the lack of oxygen and probably from, from being underwater for a fair while, I had a heart attack. Heart attacks are one of those things where you can't breathe properly. So if you're in the ocean, one of the things that happens is you, you're breathing through a straw. For probably 10 minutes or so, I struggled to stay alive. Then lost consciousness a couple of times and take water on. And then slowly swam in to the beach very slowly. I was conscious of the fact that if I don't get to the beach, no one will find my body. So when I eventually got to the shoreline, the way picked me up, it was high tide and transported me down backwards onto the beach and I fell uh, probably from a lot big height. So but then I lost consciousness on the beach again. I remember crawling for a while, trying to get up the beach and losing consciousness. It'd probably be 10 minutes or so, no one saw me. I was about 150 metres away from a surf club. So I crawled, lose consciousness, crawled. I knew I didn't have long to go. I had that feeling that I was dying. I kept going through a process. It was almost like meditation because the pain was so severe. I just kept saying, well, I don't want to die. And you actually get to a stage where you, you make a decision. Um, so I think you have a decision when you're dying, whether or not to let go or not. The hard part of dying is living. So I kept thinking, well, I'm choosing life over death, but life is really painful. When I virtually got to the hospital, um, I was just about gone. I knew I, knew I wasn't gonna make it, really. In fact, going into the hospital, that was my most severe time because I kept thinking, well, this is it. But that was just round one. And round one was just surviving the, um, the surfing stuff. When I got into the, the hospital later on, I passed away. I was incredibly scared. There was this rush of, of hot and cold. There was all sorts of feelings that were going on. But to, to feel the fact that you're actually dead, there's no life there, that moment is, is frozen in my brain. I looked around the room and things were dark. I didn't see anything at all. There was no one in the room except for this, this thing. In the distance, I saw a light. It's like a haze. All I know is that when I looked at the nurse's face and she was on the top of me, she, she punched me a couple of times and she said, I'm not losing another one today. And then I suddenly, I suddenly just basically started to see people again. I'm sort of glad that I had the experience because basically, you know, it changed my life dramatically. That one particular second, I changed dramatically for the better, um, but it took me a long time to work that one out. You sort of go back to that moment and you just go, okay, that's the moment everything changed. And if you survive it somehow, you sort of come back and you've, given, you've been given that second chance. Everything about life is m more, more about enjoyment. The blues are bluer, the greens are greener. Everything about the place is just sparkling now. The colour of the ocean's brighter. Everything's brighter. 
everything smells better. But I always had this impression that I had to be back in the water. So I slowly sort of went, I just want to get to the ocean. And the fear that I had, it, it stayed around for a while. A year late, so later I started going for small dips. I used to walk down and put salt water, or get the, one of the kids to bring a jar of salt water and put it on my head. But now I swim and, you know, jump in, you know, when the water, when the surf's big. Every now and then I get that feeling that, you know, that I'm there in a particular point and, you know, life is really, really fragile. So you just realise now that basically at any stage you just can go. Anybody that's had a life changing experience like this suddenly just has this thing where you get an appreciation of the fact that basically tomorrow or the next day, you know, you're long gone and so you just take advantage of every moment. Holding people close, keeping them close, it's really important to do that stuff and just know that, you know, tomorrow could be a day that, you know, you could lose things. The, the meaning of life is right in front of you. Everybody looks for things further afield. I spent my entire life traveling and, and um, surfing, finding all these other things that were more important. And then I realized everything that was important to me was right in front of me. And they were the simple things, they were the family and the kids and, you know, just things that were around right in front of you. And we just get so embroiled in all the other stuff that we forget in the end. And also the fact that sometimes it's best just to sit, you know, to not do too much. Don't worry too much about career and all that stuff. It just, it's all fleeting. Yeah, the very things that are right in front of you are the most important things. Just appreciate that one moment that you're in and the sunshine on your face.